this video for a few weeks now. This is my birth story. Be crazy when you're outside. <laughs> you're crazy inside. Be easy on us. Try. Be easy on us. Be easy on us. Please. We're just Don't babies. Originally, I never wanted to post my birth story, but maybe my experience can put things into perspective. If you're having a negative or have had a negative birthing experience or traumatic experience so i woke up at 8 a.m with some intense contractions and i woke my husband up and i said wake up we are having a baby today i just know that we're having a baby today i can feel it a mother's intuition is very strong i had gotten a prenatal massage the night before and I asked her if she can do whatever it takes to induce me because I was just so ready to pop. I was ready to just give birth and I wanted to speed up the process, which now that I think about it, um, I would have much rather just taken my time and enjoyed the last stretch of the third trimester. I had Braxton Hicks and it was really painful and there was a lot of pressure in my stomach. I was getting a lot of cramping in my legs. I just wanted to give birth. I think it's also important to note a few weeks before I gave birth, I had an ECV, which is a procedure where the doctor physically flips the baby. He was not head down at the 37 week mark and it wasn't likely that he was going to be head down. I wanted to avoid a C-section at all costs because originally I wanted to have an at-home birth. So C-section was not on my birth plan. That was a really successful procedure. My doctor was able to flip him in less than a minute, which is incredible. It was very painful, but thankfully it was successful. So I had really high hopes of having a vaginal birth. The morning before I had him, 8 a.m., I was having a lot of contraction around my belly. I was ready to go and I knew that I wanted to labor at home as long as I could because the second you get to the hospital, they don't let you eat. They don't let you move around as much. I just knew I wanted to be in the comfort of my own home and I also wanted to labor in my bathtub. That really, really helped. So between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m., my contractions were irregular, but I was eating dates. I was moving around a lot. I would just walk back and forth um, in my living room, in my kitchen. I took a walk outside. This was like the beginning stages of my labor, so it wasn't as painful just yet. I was drinking a lot of water. My one mistake I think that I had wish I had done was eat. <laughs> Eating foods that give me energy for the whole process because I didn't eat much. Um, I had like a tomato soup, but that was not enough to hold me for the entire day and a half <laughs> that I was in labor. My husband was writing down every single time I had a contraction. We were really like tracking everything. My doctor had said, well, if your contractions start becoming five minutes apart, then it's time to come into the hospital. I was like, okay, I'm going to wait until that happens. But until that happens, I'm gonna give myself like a little bit of time just to make sure that I'm like actually ready to go to the hospital. I wanted to labor in my shower as much as possible. And that really helped. It really helped take off heat and the pressure from my stomach and also helped a lot with my nausea. 12 p.m. hit and I started getting contractions five minutes apart told my husband I think I'm ready to call the doctor and it was just like unbearable I needed some help <laughs> the nurse said it's time for you to come in let's get the show on the road I told my husband I was like I kind of want to wait a little bit more and as I said that I noticed that my contractions were starting to like be wishy-washy again so I was starting to get like a really long one and then a really short one and they weren't consistently five minutes apart anymore I had gone in the week before and I was already a centimeter and a half dilated I think I even like hopped in the shower again 
I originally wanted a water birth anyways. This was my way of compromising. So fast forward 12 to 3 p.m. 3 p.m. it was getting absolutely unbearable. I was yelling at this point and my husband's like, okay, it's it's time to go. We were like, oh, like we'll just go get coffee. I was like, I'm I can do this. Like I I'm going to mentally challenge myself. Like, let's go get coffee, let's get some energy. And as we were turning in to go to the coffee shop, I had the one contraction and every mom knows this that one contraction hits and you're like okay like i'm done like i need to go to the hospital right now and that one contraction hit when we were turning in to go to the coffee shop and i started screaming and i was like take me to the hospital right now we just went straight to the hospital we were like forget the coffee shop we're going straight to the hospital at this point it's 3 p.m we check in they monitor the baby they monitor me they make sure everything is fine. They're like, okay, you're definitely in labor. So they had checked me into a room about two hours after. They had me just kind of like hang out, walk around. I was already in like a hospital gown and everything. I was basically ready to go. They asked me if I wanted to get an epidural and I said no. So like I said, my original plan was actually to have an at-home birth. <laughs> I just had a gut feeling that I just needed to be at the hospital and like I said, mother's intuition is always right. <laughs> First time mom, I'm like I had this whole in-depth birth plan. I had a diffuser with cinnamon and sage. I had a box of cinnamon that I had my, my husband pull up to my nose every single time I had a contraction and it helped so much. I had a hypnobirthing video playing in the background. I wanted a very serene, a very calm environment. I wanted to breathe through every single contraction. I also asked if I could not be tied to any monitors. I wanted to be able to move around freely. I wanted to be able to take a walk if I wanted to. I wanted to be able to do exercises and not have to worry about any wiring. They were very accommodating actually. They tried to like go by my birth plan. <laughs> as much as we could and then things got a little scary at this point i had been in labor um the entire day from eight to midnight i hadn't taken the epidural it was getting really painful i had zero drugs in me and i was breathing through every single contraction i really really wanted to have a natural birth i wanted to experience that natural rush of oxytocin when you give birth and i wanted to feel every second of it to some people that may be like absolutely crazy <laughs> but to me i was really connected throughout my pregnancy to my faith and to my baby and i knew that i wanted to be really connected during the birthing process as well around 2 a.m the next day i was defeated i was tired i was hungry i didn't want to move around anymore and i wanted to take a nap i just wanted to sleep i hadn't had anything to eat all day they had given me like ice chips which i just i truly just don't understand the ice chips thing like you're literally giving me sugar and ice cream but you won't let me eat a hearty meal i don't know i just it was just not doing it i looked at my husband and i was like i need to get the epidural right now like you need to give me the epidural <laughs> i need to be drugged up i cannot handle this pain anymore i want to get the show on the road rewind a little bit midnight and my water still hadn't broke my doctor asked me if I wanted my water to be broken. Literally, we'll just go in there, poke it and break my water. And I said, absolutely, let's speed things up. Let's break my water. So he broke my water and the nurse looked at me and she said, you're doing absolutely amazing. But I just want to let you know that once your water is broken, labor is a lot harder. And I said, I'm already in so much pain like how much harder can it get like I'm if I'm able to <laughs> to control what is happening to me right now I was so confident in myself and I said I can do this and she was absolutely right she was right and the second my water he had broken my water all of this it was like a waterfall was just water gushing and gushing and I could feel my contractions getting a lot stronger and I could feel the pressure. I could feel my stomach kind of like, it was like a balloon and I could feel my stomach shrink a little bit. 
and I could feel I could feel the baby move a lot less. I was in labor for a few hours um, after my he had broken my water, and I could be totally wrong with the timing, but this is just what I remember. After a few hours, I was like, I need to get the epidural right now. I did it. I experienced labor with that epidural. It's time for me to get the epidural. And he was like, okay, let's do it. Every contraction would come and I'm like, okay, I don't need it. I can I can do this. I got this. And then the contraction would come and I'd be like, give me that epidural right now. And then the contraction would go away and I'd be like, okay, I don't need it. I'm good. And this happened for like a good hour. The doctor came in and said, no problem. The anesthesiologist is on his way. And I said, on his way? <laughs> What do you mean he's on his way? Like he's not here already? <laughs> he was like, yeah, he'll he'll be here like in 10 minutes. 10 minutes in labor is like 10 years. My contractions were getting worse and worse and closer together and closer together and I was only at four centimeters. So the nurse came in, she's like, okay, well let me check where you're at. Oh, you're at seven centimeters. Like, you're almost there. And I'm like, oh, perfect, I'm almost there. Another nurse comes in because um, they switched shifts. Another nurse comes in, she texts me, she's like, I'm so sorry, but you're actually at four centimeters. And I looked at her and I said, this is what four centimeters feels like. Finally, the anesthesi anesthesiologist had came he had given me the epidural and everyone always asks me oh was it so was it painful did you see the needle it was so long i'm gonna tell you right now i didn't feel anything because i was having a major contraction during the time where the anesthesiologist was administering the epidural i'm also really afraid of needles so that's another reason why i didn't want to take the epidural 30 minutes later i i could still feel a lot of pressure it was definitely a lot more relieving with the epidural and it was more like the pressure that i was feeling than the actual contraction which i would take that any day at this point i was just laying there and we were just waiting and i was trying to relax my body i was trying to relax my mind so that i could speed the, up the process of labor a lot of labor is mental if i can just relax my mind maybe my body will just relax a little bit and things will just get going it's 3 a.m the nurse's energy something had shifted with the energy in the room i had felt it right away a whole bunch of people just came rushing into the room everyone was just talking and yelling and there were just like it was there was too many voices there was too much going on and i could feel everybody's energy at the time was just so off at this point i was like what do i do <laughs> whatever happens happens like <laughs> maybe i'm about to give birth right now <laughs> but then i realized i was not about to give birth and I kind of glanced over at my husband in the corner of the room and his face just looked really worried and I knew immediately that something was wrong and then I heard a nurse say there's blood there's blood um but for some reason I just felt really calm I had a lot of like faith in God's plan and I knew that whatever was going to happen in that moment whether I was going to pass or something happened with my baby I knew that God's plan is sufficient and I just kept telling myself that in the moment I just kept saying Lena have to look good have to look good and if you don't know what that means it's the Arabic word for having full trust in God and his plan and I just kept repeating that in my head while the doctors and the nurses were just flailing my legs around putting stuff in my IV so when I heard um, there's blood I was like okay it's happening like I am about to pass away and or something is about to happen to my baby and just have to look good. I was so connected throughout my pregnancy with my faith and with God and I knew that whatever happens there's always a reason for it and there's always a lesson to be learned and I just kept telling myself that in the moment. Feeling the pain of labor 
prior to this specific moment was so important. I learned that my mind is so powerful and I can control the reaction that I have. <sighs> I was bleeding out. With every contraction, my baby's heart rate would go down. And usually um, that is actually normal when you do get the epidural like your baby's heart rate does go down a bit but his heart rate was going down much faster he was not breathing they had administered pitocin to stop the bleeding so i was no longer bleeding the doctor came and said we tried everything that we could for you to have a vaginal birth we need to get you into c-section i looked at the doctor and i said i was like <laughs> my worst fear i did not want a c-section I said, okay. Within a few minutes, they had me in the OR. They got him out in a few minutes. <laughs> My husband told me he knew it was bad when the anesthesiologist felt bad for me and like was putting his hand on my hand and just like going like this. I mean, I was not gonna say no to the C-section. Whatever it takes to get my baby out safely and to save my life, Give me as much Pitocin as needed. Do whatever you need to do. We just need to get this baby out and I want to have a healthy and happy baby. I just remember shaking like I was really, really nervous. I was in a state of fear. That was the most fearful I had ever been in my entire life. Although I was very fearful of having a C-section, I was also extremely grateful. I think that is probably the only thing that kept me sane in the moment. I knew that God had my back. I felt like it was also his sign to tell me that I am not going to pass and that things are going to be okay and I am going to have a happy and healthy baby. It just was not going to be the birth that I had dreamed of. I don't think that I would have learned the lessons that I've learned and this brought me so much closer to my faith and to my baby and to my husband. He was with me throughout the entire thing. He was in the OR, he was talking me through the entire procedure. He just kept saying, you're okay, you're okay, everything's gonna be okay. They had a shield up. Um, I didn't feel being cut open but I did feel a lot of pressure and I felt the pressure when they pulled the baby out. Something that was really important to me was skin to skin, an immediate skin to skin. Unfortunately, I did not get that and that's completely fine because I got a lot of skin to skin in the following like days and weeks after. It was because I was shaking so much. They did not want me to hold the baby. Something that upset me at the time was one of the nurses didn't want me to hold the baby and I, I, now I understand why. I was really upset because I couldn't hold my baby, I couldn't see my baby, I didn't know what he looked like, I didn't, I couldn't like welcome him into the world myself. I don't want to ruin my makeup. <laughs> and that's something that like I really wanted to do. <laughs> But it's okay. I was really thankful to the anesthesiologist because he looked at the nurse and he said, no, like she wants, let her see the baby, let her hold the baby. She wants to see the baby. Like she won't be able to see the baby for another 30, 40 minutes or I don't know how long <laughs> it takes to sew me back up. Just let her have some peace of mind. And I'm so grateful to him. It did give me peace of mind to see him. I had felt so disconnected because I didn't see him right away. It just comes with having a C-section. You are not birthing the baby, you are having a, a surgery. So my husband had left with the baby to like clean him up, do some testing. And I was in the OR by myself at this point, getting sewn up and I was still shaking. And I just kept telling myself like, you are so strong, Lena. Like, you are so strong. You are so powerful. It's okay that you didn't have the natural birth that you wanted. It's okay that you didn't feel connected to your baby. You will eventually. Honor your body. Honor your, your, your body. You, you just went through a lot. Like, you had back labor. You had a lot of pain. I could either go down a really dark train of thought right now, or I could honor my body trust in God's plan and come out of this positively and that's exactly what I chose to do. A lot easier said than done and it takes a lot of strength to pull myself out of this dark hole into the light 
mentally, especially being in that OR by myself um, for however long it took to get me sewn up and out of the OR. To me, it felt like 50 years. <laughs> I was trying to focus on my train of thought within those like 20, 30 minutes. I was in the dark in the beginning half and then I thought about how everything happens for a reason and there was a reason why I was put through this test by God and I know that there are no coincidences and he tests those he loves and he gave me this specific test so that I could learn from it. Once I kind of just like snapped myself out of it and thought about that, I was able to cross over into the light. Having an emergency c-section and bringing myself to somehow find the good in it and turn it into a, a positive experience, that in itself was the most empowering process that I could have ever gone through. That could have ended <laughs> a lot differently, but I'm just so happy that I am alive and I am well and I'm healthy and I have a healthy baby. We have such a beautiful connection now. I asked you if you had any questions about my birth on Instagram. I picked five questions. How do you deal with PPD? Um, postpartum depression, I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> Take some time for yourself, even if it's just 10 minutes. Self-care, therapy, it's something that I'm still navigating. Also supplements really help. B12, vitamin D, a lot of postpartum is regulating your hormones. Was it hard to find an OB that you like? Yes. I actually went through a couple. The OB that I had delivered with was not my OB. He was her backup and I'm so happy he was the perfect OB. He just knew what to do. He was very quick and very informative. He had a stoic manner. Some people like someone who's a little bit more emotional. I personally like someone who can just give me the answers and get it moving. He did my ECV. He flipped my baby in less than a minute. Him and the nurses tried to do everything that they can to give me a vaginal birth, although it didn't work out. I appreciated the efforts. What did you pack in your hospital bag? Um, so I had packed a whole big hospital bag, but you know what? You only need the basics. Uh, the hospital gives you everything. All you really need is some PJs and maybe a few snacks. Did you get gestational diabetes? I did not. Was your pregnancy planned? It was not. It was actually very much a surprise, but it was the best surprise that I could ever ask for. I'm going to be linking a few charities below that I feel really strongly about. There are so many mothers around the world struggling right now with their births, and I want to honor them and shed light to their situations. I would like to invite you to honor them with me. There is nothing stronger than a pregnant woman about to give birth. Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, please comment below. I'll see you guys next week. Bye!